family. Any of you who've had a strong family know if you're going to keep a strong family, you have a lot of work you have to do. That you, just, you don't keep a family together unless you work at it. That takes personal strength. Work is another one. It's Monday morning. You don't feel like it. You go anyway. You're a salesman. You've been turned down four times. You make the next call. It takes personal strength. Health. And one of our great problems in America is we're not straight about this. You drink, a, you drink a quart of liquor a day. You don't do any exercise. You're 65 pounds overweight. Don't complain to the doctor because he failed or she failed. There has to be some level of personal responsibility. People who get a disease who recover versus people who don't. Personal strength is a big factor in who bounces back. People who live to be 90 and they're healthy, like Edwards Deming or like Peter Drucker, who's in his mid-80s, you'll find a lot of discipline, a lot of constant thought. They don't, it just doesn't happen genetically. They're not just lucky. Uh, although that's a factor, obviously. But, but it's amazing people, Chamberlain, remember we saw Chamberlain last week? I was told the story later by Bill Fortune. Chamberlain, the, the year after Gettysburg, was shot leading a charge. Died at 84 with the, with the wound never having fully healed, having spent every day of his life after the war in pain. Having served twice as governor, president of Bowdoin College, professor and writer. With 50 years of pain, or 40 years of pain. Now somebody else could have easily said, boy, that debilitates me so bad I can't do anything. Chamberlain lived a full life because he got up in the morning and said, okay, I'm in pain. Now what am I going to do? Um, learning. Learning is not easy and it's not always fun. And when it's not easy, you've got to work harder at it. And when it's not fun, you've got to buckle down and do it because otherwise you won't learn. And a lot of our failure with modern schools is we don't tell kids the truth, which is, if, you know, you've got to work. You've got to do homework. You've got to study. And the person being cheated by the teacher who's nice is the student who won't get a job because they don't know anything. Being nice is not as important as being effective. And so you've got to say to people, it takes personal strength to learn because learning sometimes is real hard. Finally, spiritual meaning. It's not about brainwashing. It is about the quiet moment where you decide for you what you believe. And a healthy, safe society, it seems to me, uh, has to have some concern that if we're endowed by our creator, that is by definition a spiritual phrase. So that Americans have, and there's no, there's no, it's not an accident that this is the most religious of all the Western industrial nations. Because, because it is a nation that has a spiritual meaning at its core. Now, when I talk about personal strength, let me suggest to you seven key aspects. You might come up with others, but I think these are a pretty powerful base. The first is integrity, then courage, hard work, perseverance, discipline, responsibility, and respect for others. Let me... Uh, we started with integrity. We, we argued about this a long time. We were looking for different words. Integrity is very important. It doesn't mean not lying. It means behaving with such exemplary honesty that it is the way you wished others would behave. And I believe it's at the core of a free society. A society without integrity is a society which has cancer at its heart. And it's one of the reasons that reestablishing a sense of trust is so, power, so important and so central. This is not a peripheral issue. Integrity is at the heart of a free society. If we have a transaction, I have to believe that the check you gave me is good, that the credit card you gave me is honest, that the dollar you gave me is real, that your promise that a year from now you'll do X means our partnership can work. Integrity is at the core of freedom and at the core of a free society. I think that to be free, you have to have courage. You may, I mentioned the other day that the, uh, the New Hampshire state slogan is live free or die. I think that's a very powerful concept. It takes courage to be free. It takes courage to have integrity. Integrity means saying no when everybody in the group wants you to say yes. It means disagreeing when everybody wants you to be agreeable. Not because you're obnoxious, but because you have to do what you believe in, and to do what you believe in takes great courage. To listen to yourself sometimes and do what, you, and, and do what your inner self tells you sometimes takes great courage. Third, I think there has to be hard work. I do not think it is possible to have a free society without hard work. I don't think it's possible to have personal strength without hard work. And I would suggest that because the first two are, in a sense, internal to you. I mean, you have to know whether or not you have integrity. You have to live out whether or not you have courage. Hard work is easy to identify. And I would suggest that it is a building block we ought to reinsert into the entire culture. 
mean, if you're not working hard, you're somehow not getting it about American civilization. And that doesn't necessarily mean working long. It doesn't necessarily have any, it doesn't mean you've got to put in 90 hours a week to prove you're an American. But it does mean you've got to be prepared to be energetic and committed and enthusiastic. It's why, if you look at the great work tradition in the Midwest, that on the weekend when you had time off, people also, they painted their house, they, they sewed, they cooked dinner. There, there's an energetic kind of constant activity that is at the core of, of American life. It also means perseverance. Things don't work. Things break down. You make mistakes. You just aren't that smart. And then you got to get up and do it again. I, I've always believed that for leadership, perseverance is the most important quality, much more important than IQ. That's why I think this whole bell curve argument is sort of nonsense. I don't care. I don't care what the IQ results are by racial stock. It's irrelevant. First of all, because you're an individual. I want to know what, how you're doing. And second, because IQ is dramatically less important than character. If you have courage, integrity, you have hard work, and you have perseverance, you'll beat a smart person every time. A lazy, indolent, dishonest, smart person will be wiped out in a free society by just a, by just a competent, average, hardworking person with integrity and perseverance. And we don't teach the right values. We focus on the wrong things. Perseverance, by the way, grows out of discipline. If you don't have discipline, you aren't going to get it. Now, discipline doesn't mean you have to wear a military uniform and stand ramrod straight. But it does mean when the time has come to get up, I'm, I'm into this right now. I, I swim at 6.15 6 or 6.30 every morning for a half mile. I hate swimming. I love to swim. I hate doing it at 6.15 in the morning. And I hate having it built into my schedule because I don't like being controlled. I also know that I'm 51. I have an obligation to keep my health up. Uh, and I drink too much beer and eat too much ice cream. And if I don't swim, I will look like a little round bowling ball. And uh, it will be disgusting. So the combination. <laughs> And we now know what sound bites will distort this week, don't we? Uh, but, but the truth is, for all of us, there, there are things, there are times, there are places where you've got to do it, and the only way you can do it is to discipline yourself. I accept no comment later on about the degree to which I may already look like a bowling ball. There are limits <laughs> to academic freedom. Uh, all of that, I think, grows out of a sense of responsibility. That you, you know, remember, you are endowed with the right to pursue response, to pursue happiness. But that means you have the responsibility to exercise that right. So responsibility, a word which has almost disappeared in the, in the uh, elite culture, 